the NFL stands for not for long. Upset. Sharga and Armstead. Roll out. Walker. Still running out. Looks to the left. Wide open. Thompson. Touchdown. Colin Thompson with the touchdown. There was nobody within 20 yards. What of a catch off the bobble. Colin Thompson scoops it up. Lofting corner of the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. The first NFL touch for Colin Thompson is a score. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Colin Thompson Show. I'm Colin Thompson. That's Jack Connell. Everything we do here is brought to you by our media company, Not For Long Media. Tons of shows across multiple platforms, baseball, football, food, and debauchery in the Sam Boners, military service, you name it. We got it here. Professional athletes in the CFL, NFL, Super Bowl champions. Uh, appreciate our team here at Not For Long Media. We have an awesome group making up several shows. Appreciate Jack Connell, uh, our producer. Jack, what's the latest and greatest? I know you're getting jacked up for a little high school football going on. Yeah, first games tomorrow. I have a couple of family friends that are involved with my alumni, so I was talking with them, and they're playing our rival from when I played up more, and I assume they're still the rival, Thanksgiving game, so. I figured I'd stop by to see what's going on with them, see if they're going to be – how good they'll be this year. I mean, they're bouncing back from a pretty rough stretch over the last few years. But, you know, it'll be interesting to see that. I'm just glad the football is back, a meaningful football for record-wise. Of course, preseason football is great, but it's just a different level when it's in-season games. No offense. No doubt about it, man. No, it's fine, you know. No offense taken, Jack. You know, you're not uh, – you know, hey, not everyone can – can have the luxury of playing in regular season games like you did in the NFL, Jack. You know, so us preseason guys grinding out there, no big deal. So, yeah, last game coming up here with the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, it's been absolutely an incredible experience here in Minnesota. I hope to be here in season. It's been uh, first class. And, uh, you know, speaking of first class, our friends over the original Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com, shipping fudge and sweet treats across the country, shipping some out here to Minnesota. To my guys in the tight end room, they don't even know yet. They don't even listen to the show. Thanks for your support, tight ends. Uh, so I'm sip- I shipped a bunch out here. Shipped it yesterday. Boom, in the mail. I'll be here tomorrow. So their their fancy wax paper they wrap it in uh, holds the fudge for a week plus. So again, FudgeKitchens.com, our feature sponsor here, make things go and not for long. Media, you know, Jack. This is a, a special one for me. This is Steve Devlin is joining our podcast today. Coach Devlin is now the defensive coordinator at your sinus college. Uh, but our relationship was started in 2007, 2008, when I was with the Our Lady of route, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Romans. I'm actually wearing the shirt today, oddly enough. And, you know, I get this call from the athletic director at Wood, like, hey, if you'd like to shadow Wood, we'll make an opportunity for you to check out the school and I, it's because we reached out to the school because my friends at Romans football were like, Hey, you, we're going to all going to go to wood. I'm like, what do you mean? We're not going to East or West or South or Happer Horsham or wherever. Uh, Ryan Arch, you know, he, he was going to go to Neshaminy. I'm like, why aren't we going to our public schools? They're like, well, we're going to go play football at wood. It's got a great program. You know, this coach Steve Devlin's there and there's a lot of momentum. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should go look because all my friends are going there. Like literally just because of my friends. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, it was the best decision I ever made. I wouldn't be in the NFL without it. I wouldn't have been able to have the, you know, personal success, um, team success, and the direct it's, you know, relationship football's had on my personal life. You know, meeting my wife, my best friends, family, it's impacted, you know, me as a man, person, uh, tremendously. And Steve Devlin has a lot to do with it. A lot of my youth coaches do. And I've been very fortunate uh, to play in great organizations at Mount Carmel and then go to wood and play for, you know, guys like Steve and Jim Gillespie and Mike Carey and Stangle. And, you know, the list goes on of just, of people I've been able the white family, um, Tom white jr. And Tom white senior. I'm just trying to name some top of my head, coach Barrett, coach Brown. I'm going on and on here. Uh, coach Holman at wood. Uh, who am I forgetting? There's so many, but, and if I, I it's, it's not personal, if, if you're not top of my head right now, I promise. But I, I 
I've been, you know, touched. I wasn't even going to go this route, but I've been blessed by so many people. I'm a product of those around me. And uh, Coach Devlin has a ton. You know, you can tell him I'm almost emotional here because it's, it's really had a major impact on my life. I wouldn't be talking to a microphone as a Minnesota Viking without Coach Devlin. Uh, so I'm looking forward to the interview. Uh, but, you know, there were the heydays at Wood, Jack. And I know you were not too far down the street there, at our, you know, at, at uh, Hapro Horsham. Coach Holman was your strength coach. And funny enough with Jack, for those listening, Coach Holman had me come speak to the team when I, I was with the Giants, Jack. Yeah, I think you you might have just wrapped up in New York. It was right around then. That was before Chicago. Yeah, I think I got hurt, and I had the Merv's appendectomy, and the Giants cut me. And he, he had me in to come speak. So I went and spoke, and I put my net number on the board, and there, no one texted me other than just a guy named Jack Connell. This was, what, Jack, seven years ago? Here we are today, still six years ago. It's pretty crazy. Um, and Jack, you know, is a major contributor to our not for long media and huge help for me personally and professionally. I digress. So, again, the relationships with football, a lot of it has to do with, with Coach Devlin and all the things what Archbishop Wood, Archbishop Wood did for me as a person, as a player, as a student. Like, it was the right fit for me. So, Jack, your thoughts on Wood through that era there before you were a high school athlete throughout your time as a high school athlete, paint that picture for those that may not really understand what we're about to talk about me and coach Devlin. Yeah. To be honest. I mean, I haven't really actually done the math, but I honestly think I might be closer to wood than I am to Hapro. I mean, I'm very close in that area. Sisters went there. My oldest sister was a cheerleader of wood. So I know very well about, I've been one of my youngest memories. I just remember being actually in the high school and stuff like that. I don't remember going to any specific games when I was little, but I mean, I they're very well aware of. I mean, they're the most dominant team. I mean, it was just really dominant school. I mean, shout out Coach Hallman. I, the one thing I love, I love playing it with our guests and people I've gotten to know. I call it in my head the seven degrees of Joe Hallman. I, it just seems like any one of our guests that we have, they can be looped in somehow, some way to knowing Coach Hallman or one of the yeah. staffs that he was a part of. So great strength mm -hmm. coach. I'm pretty sure he's still there at Wood, but I mean, yep. really legendary guy. But yeah, I mean, they've just been so dominant between, I remember just Pitts was in high school when I was in high school, like the teams True. after me, before me, it's, they've been a really dominant group. It has, it has. And a lot of it has to do with, with Coach Devlin. He built amazing staffs. And we're going to talk about that today. Um, and those staffs were just full of great people, men and women, um, took a village to produce, I don't know what it was, 40-something Division One players. I think we have five NFL players. But this wasn't a program that was doing this before, folks. I mean, they had good players come through there. Don't get me wrong, great players. But at the, sh the mass quantities, you know, Urban Meyer said it was the best high school football team he's ever seen. Uh, you're going to get into that here. So a lot of fun stuff. Um, I'm going too long here. I really want to send it over to Coach Devlin. I just want to paint a picture for those at home about southeastern Pennsylvania. We get into Central Bucks West. I think we do in this one here. I did this interview with Coach before I signed with Minnesota as kind of our summer series and allows me to, you know, focus on work and football as through training camp during a busy time. So, yeah, let's see, Jack. My first training camp in high school – let's see, my first training camp was 2006 – how many training camps is that, Jack? 06 to 23. It's like 17, 16. Yeah, yeah. pretty crazy. <laughs> um, I feel it. No, I feel great. So it's, uh, you know, without further ado, Steve Devlin, appreciate you, Coach, and all the coaches that have impact on me um, and so many others. So appreciate you guys. It's Colin Thompson Show brought to you by Not For Long Media. That's Jack Connell. I hope everybody has a great, great, great summer weekend. It's winding down. Enjoy some college football. All right, Coach Steve Devlin's joining us from your sinus, Archbishop Wood, legendary, you know, high school football coach, now turned college coach. How you doing? Good, Kyle. How are you doing, buddy? I can't be as formal. We can't be formal on this because we go way back to two thousand seven, probably. I came in in 08. I have I have a napkin that somebody gave me when you were in eighth grade with your name and phone number on it. And uh, when you were playing for the Romans, CYO, and, and uh, I still have the napkin. And um, that's how we first got in touch. What was on the napkin? Was my number? Colin Thompson with your phone number. So, yeah. Uh, See, folks, I knew we had a lot of the Roman guys. So, yeah, I knew who you were. And, you know, a lot of the guys before you with, you know, McCartney's and, 
and Rent Hills and all that. So I kind of knew about it, but it was, uh, uh, but I, I remember I found that napkin a couple of years ago in, in my box of stuff. Oh man. I remember Joe said he called first and Joe says, eh, Hey Kyle, you know, to my dad, they was like, somebody's calling like to go to a school. Like, I was going to, I want to play basketball at Central Bucks East. Like that thought to me, that was my dad coached there for one year. So I would sit on the bench with the guys, right? Like, I don't know. I thought that was like the NBA. Uh, probably when I was like 10 or 11. And uh, that's all I wanted to do play for a subpar basketball program that I knew. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you know, Monahan and Vicari and uh, Sheridan, all these guys are like, we're going to, we're going to uh, Wood. Like, what is, what is Wood? So that's why everyone's like, yeah, recruited heavily. I'm like, I don't know. I just went down there and met with you and, you're like, yeah, here's what, here's the program. Here's the weight room. I remember like seeing all these huge dudes lifting in there and Anthony Narisi and uh, you're like, he's the tight end. I'm like, well, I'll never be as big as him. Right. You know, I'll never be as good as him. I was like so nervous. Always was probably until like my senior year, but that's neither here nor there. And uh, yeah, no, it's good fond memories. I remember going to that weight room upstairs and the way it smelled and the same music every day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we would, we would be uh you know, up on the second floor, you'd be afraid to clean because you'd be dropping the weight and afraid to go right through the floor. <laughs> it was crazy, man. It, yeah. it it just was, it was hot as shit in the summer. I remember Jimmy Gillespie getting on there, like on his back with his feet up, just like repping like 225. I'm like, who's this guy? You know, yeah. <laughs> uh, it was funny. I was on a show the other day and they were like, take me through every tight end coach you've had from like youth to here. I'm like, wow, it's actually a great question. Jimmy came up, of course, but, but, uh, um, no, there were so many fun, fond memories and you're like talking on the show today and you're like, what, what are you even talking about? I'm like, I don't know. It's just like go through all the years. So let's go back like, Oh, eight freshman year. I was pissed. I was pissed. Frank Taylor, Joey Monander playing varsity. I was down, but I was pissed, but I knew deep down inside I wasn't ready for it. Um, and it was probably one of the most fun times in my life playing football, like freshman football. And I think it allowed me to become a better leader, a better person, better community guy around the team and the club. And like, I think it allowed our group to move forward. We had a really good class coming in. Um, allowed Kyle and I to get our feet underneath each other too, as kind of like the younger leaders in the team and that group. And but that was a tough. That was tough on me. Yeah, man. it was tough for me. It was a tough decision. I, I still think it's one of the toughest things I had to do. I mean, you know, being a head coach and, and got this good young big kid coming in um and his best friends were gonna play jv and play varsity as a freshman and i had to tell you that you had to stay down not that I, you weren't talented enough it was just we needed joey monahan because he was the backup quarterback and we were, we were going to need frank taylor because we, we were a little didn't offensive line and you know we had a tight end who was anthony narisi i remember who's pretty good player and, and really uh, good and, uh, you know, you, I just want you to play and develop. And, and I thought it would be better for you to do it as a freshman and also be a leader than to come up and be a JV and just play on Monday afternoons and, and have your own squad. And um, I know you didn't like it at the time, and I didn't like doing it, but I thought for the team it would be the best thing to do. And I, I to this day, it, it's probably the right decision. 100% um, it is. And that's yeah. why I bring it up because it had a major impact. Like – I think it had major impact because I think I'm unique in the sense that and I, the older you get, and you're sitting in all these meetings, like, who are you? What are you? Like, what's your why? All this stuff. Like, I love to work with the, the group and I love to um, get right in and immerse right away. And sometimes it may turn people off because it's like, why is this guy, you know, boisterous or why is this guy confident like this? It's like, not because I think I'm like a great player. It has nothing to do with it. But I just think I, I have a good feel for what it takes to pull the group through um and has nothing to do with like being i never was the best player on any team like obviously i had gifts and all this stuff but i never was like scoring 50 touchdowns and like lighting up the stat sheet um at, there's like different players there's like you know kobe's and all those guys they're like studs and I'm probably more of a really good role player and, and uh with a lot of gifts and I, I felt there i was able to do that more um and that group understood how i how we went about it there was a lot of us and there was a per coach drama glass we were like the perfect coaches I remember I knew your qualities about your leadership qualities. I remember maybe the first time I met you, or the second time I met. You. Remember my office used to be in the used to be in the showers, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> back there. I remember you coming in and with your dad. And I remember you telling your dad to go outside. I remember you saying, hey, dad, just go outside. Let me and coach sit here and talk. And you were in eighth grade. And I'm like, wow, this kid's got a little bit behind him and, and something. And, and then as I got to know you and get to, to develop, I knew you were going to be a leader. I knew sending you down there, play, develop, put some weight on, get in the weight room for the year. Sophomore year, you were going to come back and you were going to be the guy. Narisi was leaving. We didn't have another tight end. And, and uh, you know, I knew all that going going forward. But, you know, still a tough decision. And, and uh, yeah. I think it worked out in the, in the long run. Yeah, it did. It was the best. It was allowed me to get confident, make plays. I remember that sophomore junior game. Sophomore, we did the freshman sophomore game, excuse me. That was a bloodbath. We had the guys to match them, but I remember getting my ass kicked and like, I'm not physically ready because you're just a boy, you, you know. Like, I remember Rory and Butler just killing me every play. And then, you know, next season we moved forward. And that first year, let's say 2018, that was the first year we were able to compete in the PIAA state yeah. championships. What was that like? And, and Wood went to the state title, and, and we lost to Thomas Jefferson, a loaded team, and Wood had a ton of studs. But what was that like? Like, take us back to the old PCL. You coached at prep before, and you couldn't go to a state title. Like, was that always talked about for a while? Because, again, I'm a Central Bucks kid. I really don't know what's going on. But was that a topic like, hey, we should be competing in state titles every year? So, so me growing up, I was a, a Catholic league guy. So I, the only thing I knew, you know, we, we weren't in the suburban leagues. or right? We played Catholic schools. And, um. Just you or me? Oh, you're good. I'm typing. Sorry. Okay. Uh, there's like an Outlook thing on the screen. Huh. I don't know what that is. No, we're good. We'll clip. We'll clip it right out. Just keep going with your story. Uh, so, being a Catholic guy, all you ever knew was you wanted to play the first week in December. It was the Catholic League Championship, and and uh, um, that's it. I didn't know anything else. I didn't know you know you would play Thanksgiving Day game, and you would play hopefully a Catholic League uh, Championship game, and that's all I knew. So. When I got the wood, you know, I was at prep and we did the same thing. And then when I got the wood, my first year was was that. And then we were allowed, um, I guess we were, the Catholic League was in a probation year. They were allowed to be in the PIAA, but weren't allowed to be in the playoffs. And then the second year we got into playoffs and I was like, I know nothing about it. We started playing teams from I never even heard of. And um, we just got on a roll and we just, we did some good things and, and, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson was loaded that year and, and uh, you know, still one of my biggest, biggest things I would change in coaching was the opening kickoff of Thomas Jefferson. We had a kid, Sean McCartney, who was one of the best athletes in the school, and uh, he was our quarterback. And I was – people were telling me he was returning punts, he was returning kickoffs, he was doing everything for me. And he's like – and I remember people said, we can't do that. He's our best player. If he gets hurt, we have we, we don't have nobody to replace him. And, so sometime during the year, I didn't – I think it was maybe in the beginning of the playoffs, I pulled him from that and put somebody else in there. Of course, the state championship comes, open kickoff, we get the ball, kick it off, and our returner fumbles. And they get the ball inside the 20, and, and uh, you know, we lose 28 nothing or whatever it was. So, I was there, man. I remember being in the 20th row, you know. Yeah. Hanging out, whatever we were doing, just – thinking i don't know if i could do this or we'll ever be back and who knows you know it's at the time you, you want to do all those things but like you just live it you're just in the moment you know you don't really know what's going on and then we fast forward to that next year uh <clears throat> sophomore year i remember it was like yesterday it was like we ran uh west catholic remember they went to the wood yeah i just I remember little bits of the season west catholic went to wood we were playing at west yep and uh, they showed up, man, in pads, came walking right in the door. I was shitting down my leg. I'm like, I'm done. I don't know I'm going to do this. And I'm playing a great game uh, defensively and offensively. And and um, it was kind of like, oh, shit, I can do this moment for me. And that was a really big deal. But I remember just like we ran like boot angle flag. We ran throwback. And we ran like quarterback draw with Jerry Rahill, like every play. Yeah. And it worked. And we yeah. beat that West Catholic team. And that was like – First time we beat West Catholic in a long time. That was a big deal. I remember Jake Zuzek, who played at Navy, is a great player. They had all those studs that were playing in Penn State. I remember Kyle making some big plays. I made a catch, I think, on fourth down or on like a sprint out. He called a corner route. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got it done, man. That was a big one. And, and we just kind of that year – I think we, we, we lost a couple games. That year, yeah. we didn't yeah. like run the slate. It wasn't like what we were doing in junior and senior year, but we lost maybe we lost like Chestnut Hill. Did we, we, lose I think we lost, yeah. 
They had that good running back, Ibrahim Campbell, right? He went to yes. Northwestern. Yep. Played He's in the league somewhere for a while. He was. He gave. I definitely gave him my first concussion, 100%. Right. <laughs> or whatever. We can't even say that now. But I, I got my bell rung a little bit by him. I was like, oh, this guy's a brick. Right. Um, yeah, no. So that was good years. And then we went on a big run, man. We beat, like, some pretty good great teams. We ended up playing Seals Grove in the, you know, in the uh, state. What was that? The cool Semis. Semis? Semis? Yeah. That team was a mon- just that team was built of just ridiculous wrestlers. Just like every kid was a state champion wrestler, I felt like. And that kid ended up getting a car crash, did he not? Yeah, it was prom or something. Yeah, the fullback who was like their yeah. best player. Yeah. yeah. They had that they had that did they have a wide out later on? Yeah, I think he ended up going to Penn State. He walked on, right? And he played well for him. Yes. Okay, and then what? The next year was the big year. Here comes Carrie. Oh boy. How'd that go down? Like, did, did you, did Co- did Carrie call you? Like, and for those that are listening, we're talking about Mike Carrie, you know, legendary coach in Pennsylvania. Obviously, Coach Devlin is as well, but Mike Carrie comes in, <clears throat> Jordan Forces was at Central Bucks West through their heyday, you know, one of the best high school football programs really ever, uh, consistent for shit, four decades. Um, but how'd that go down when Coach Carrie came in? It was, uh, it was like a recruiting process on my fans. <laughs> Um, no, nah, well, Mike was awesome. Mike was, uh, you know, wanted to get back into the game and, and, um, you know, kind of came down. We talked and we talked about who we had coming back and what we needed. And, and, uh, you know, I, I knew who Mike was and I knew about Mike and what he could bring to the program. And, you know, there's very few guys in, in high school sports that have an affection to coach offensive line. And to do it right, and to do it, um, that that's really what matters from the little details. And, and uh, I knew from what I was doing offensively, that would only help us. And and uh, um, so you know, we went through, we talked a couple times, and we, we got together a couple times, and and uh, and you know, we agreed upon some things, and and went from there. And and uh, um, you know, I, I've always said there's been like three guys in my coaching career that have have been impacts only first, the guy I played for in high school, John Quinn, who um, he's passed away, but he was, he was just a different individual and he could be crazy. He could be crying in front of him the next minute. He would be yelling. He'd be out in the field with no shoes on. He was just a different individual. Love it. Uh, then there was a guy, Gil Brooks, I coached with it at the prep and Gil was probably the most um, detail oriented guy I've ever been around from, you know, when you say cross your T's and dot your I's, he did everything like that in the football field. And, and before there was huddle, before there was um, being able to share film and watch it on the computer, we would be sitting down to prep, me and him, till 11 o'clock at night, every night, and just breaking down film. And, and this was in high school. But we, we made sure every little detail was, was done with. And he taught me about the organization part of it. And then I also a lot about football. But And then Mike came in, and Mike kind of – the execution part of it, the, 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 the small details, the, the translating the weight room to the football field, the, yeah. the little things like that. Um, and, and competition every day in practice, we made it a competition every day in practice. We were fighting for your job and people might not like to hear that. And people might not agree with it, but it was, it was a tryout on a Tuesday afternoon. Your tryout was for Wednesday practice to be the first group. It wasn't anything else. And, and that's kind of how it was. It was the best thing ever to happen to me. Mike, you know, <clears throat> obviously going to Wood, playing for you, is right there. The next best thing was Mike. Because when it came to being a big man and what I wanted to do for my goals, yeah, of course, be a high school, good high school football player, sure. But we competed before in practice. But Mike made you hate your teammates and made you hate him for literally four straight days. And then on Friday, you'd be walking in from the walkthrough like, I'm the worst player on the planet, and he'd find a way to bring you back up in that 24 hours with a long text before bed. Right. And you'd be like, I'm going to go kill somebody. I love this guy. So, And it's emotional talking about because you two are such massive impact on my life. And I'll never forget, like, I would come home. My parents always say it. Monday night dinner or Tuesday night dinner when we go full pads on Tuesdays was a mess. I'd be out there crying in my dinner meal. 
I'm the worst player. I give, I, I'm selfish. I don't care about my teammates. <laughs> right. Right. He used to say, you're the softest six, four player in the country. Coaches call about you all the time. I talk to everybody, right. <laughs> but they, the only thing I tell them is you got a size 15 shoe. That's the only good thing I can say. <laughs> I'm like, Holy shit. You know, yeah. this is, but it, it was a shock in the pan. It was like every time I got coached hard rest of my life, done i didn't even care i did i was so numb to it uh but you know between you guys but you guys had a good rapport of handling it right way good cop bad cop uh you know it was just two different styles but similar in a way and it, it was perfect for me and our whole team because it worked out and we're i think we're the best team in the state of history of pennsylvania you know obviously we lost that game to pittsburgh central catholic it sucks but no mike was unique and it was funny he as a play it was great because mike as a player was like an all-american you know, so it's like, okay, like whether that's the truth or not, but when it, when he comes to you and you're like, yeah, dude, I blocked for Tony Dorsett for like four years and I was an All-American, you're like, holy shit, you know? Right. And I think he was great with the film. Um, he brought details too, like you said, like the details are huge. Um, and he was, he was like you said, man, you recruit, it was like the perfect glove for what we needed for our guys. We were some big old boys and he needed to get us whipped into shape. And it's like anything else. It's like, you know, football wise, you, you want to get better every day in what you're doing. It, it, being a player, being a coach, yeah. and, and me being my first time head coach and, and, you know, getting to a state championship game without him and then learning some different things with him. And then, like you said, our 2011 team, I, I'll put that up against anybody ever in the, in the state of Pennsylvania. And, and uh, you know, we did lose that game so called because of that. Missed uh, whatever it was, field goal. Lighting delay. Lightning delay, but there's no lighting. There was lighting in the distance the entire game, and you could see it. We all saw it. It was all there. It was fine. It was no big deal. It was hot as shit. And we had the lightning delay. When we start to make a drive, we're playing Pittsburgh Central Catholic. For those listening, we're on ESPN. <laughs> Which how do we how do let's go back? How do we get that gig? It was just because we had you know we had um, it was one of those ESPN things where we had six, seven division one players and they had a bunch of division one players. And it was okay. kind of like, that was kind of like the matchup and let's two Pennsylvania schools. Let's go up. And I think we played at gateway high school. And, and uh, um, yeah, I remember that to this day. I remember taking, having a huge play and, and then driving down the field and getting the ball, like inside the 10, like first and goal. And then all of a sudden the game stops and they we got to go inside. I remember, you know, then you play, of course you remember little things, but I remember, that we came on the drive. I think I was in pass protection and like Joey scrambled around. Like, I think, was it Abercrombie made the catch? Maybe. I I, boom. He threw it to like the 50. I'm like, Oh, we're right in it. Let's go. Cause Visco was a great kicker. Yeah. And, uh, they called it. So we go sit inside. We're sitting there, you know, we're all warmed up. There's only 45 seconds left on the clock. Like I walked down the steps and my whole lower body cramped after the break. I'm like, Oh my God, you're not missing these two, two, three plays. Are you kidding me? Like, what are you doing? So I remember like going to home and he's pounding Pedalite and, uh, when I were playing a couple of plays, but <clears throat> I was a snapper. So that was, that was probably my most pressure snap ever. Yeah. We laid it down and, you know, Visco hit it best he could. That's a tough kick, but that shows you how big his leg is. He put it over the upright and they said it was no good. It looked good to me. Yeah, look good to me. Still looks good to me. I'll never forget going back to the hotel after that. And uh, the lady checking us out said to me, how'd you guys do? And I said, ah, we, we lost, but we uh, we had a field goal. Uh, it was good, but they said it wasn't good. And I'll never forget, she said to me, you aren't going to get a call out here in Pittsburgh. And I'll never forget that. I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. And we had, no, we're not. Yeah. yeah, and then we end up going what thirteen straight. Mercy ruling everybody. I think we beat West Catholic the next week, eight twenty-eight nothing, which wasn't a mercy rule, but we beat them good. Yeah. Um, Harrisburg was the probably one of the best games we played all year. Oh, it's a loaded team. Loaded. Bishop McDevitt, fast forward, state title. Yeah. You know, there was no question to the year before. I think we can't tell this story without Allentown Central Catholic being part of it. And I know how much you respect them and how much I respect them. Um, that was the biggest ass whooping I ever took in my life that uh, junior year up there. You know, usually as a player and you're one of the, your high school, you're one of the better players in the whatever at the time I was, the country was on, which is still real. I don't even realize it, but 
I mean, I gave everything I had, every ounce of effort, and it didn't matter. Those guys just were, they had a team built like we were probably built the next year with loads of depth, tons of size. And and we got, you know, we hung tough, but we got beat up in Allentown. And we learned a lot. I think we learned a lot. Yeah, absolutely. That. We had some we had some big injuries happen during the game. Yeah, and Sam. And, um, but they were good. Brendan Osovich, one of the best high school players you've ever seen. Um, I remember that team, our team, we had six, seven Division One kids. And, and I tell people all the time the story of like, I had a reporter call me one time and said, listen, you had six or seven division one kids. And if you had to start a team to pick one of those kids, who would you pick? And I said, Kyle Atkins. Yeah. And they were all like, well, who's Kyle Atkins? I'm like, what do you mean? You know, and he, well, he's not one of your six, seven division one kids. I'm like, well, that's the kid I would start with. And, and, uh, um, but I remember the playing that game and we played, when we played ACC, they had a kid, Kevin Goulias, oh. the receiver, who ended up playing at Villanova had a great career. Yep. And I remember the first or second play of the game, Kyle playing man to man and runs right by Kyle. And Kyle comes to the sideline and said, I can't cover that kid. Like, second play of the game, I'm like, oh, shit. Like, what do you mean? You're Kyle. You got it. You can, Kyle, and Kyle, for those like not listening, Kyle went on to be D3 All American and a great player. And he coached your sinus now. And I always say, I think Kyle should have walked on to a big program um, and played there forever. But is neither here nor there. Kyle's a great player. He was a do it all guy. He could play quarterback if he needed to, running back, wide out. Just he was Mr. There. He was there all the time. And uh, <clears throat> whatever, long story short, uh, you know, I remember looking at him at that game. He came up to me. He's like, you got to get there. Someone's got to get sacked. Like, there's no way. And I'll never forget. They were like an empty. And Goulias is in the slot. I'm standing up. Quarterback's looking to his right. I'm the left defensive end. He looks at Goulias. He says, purple. We're in split, we're in split safety. It's post. Well, we found that out like the third time in a row. Right, and he just would throw a post, and they had big boys too, man. That's like a good area with great players. Allentown's great, got studs. Mix that with the big boys and kind of that blue collar, steel, coal deal, and you're gonna get some athletes like they had. Goulias is the fastest player I played against. Um, Kyle had no shot with him. Sorry, Kyle, but uh, I didn't either. I got my ass kicked, got my absolutely ass hand to it. But we fast forward in that next year, which was we were hyped for it. We played him in Philly. Nosvich was hurt. Uh, wasn't the same team that, that, that they had the two Jack Sand Jack Sander and whatever they went to uh, New, New Hampshire and had great little career. Yeah. yeah, the twin brothers. He tore his ACL against us, I believe. But um, I digress. You know, it was a good. It was a fun journey. That junior year and that senior year, really high expectations. We're rocking and rolling. You know, it's funny. I think about too. We're just kind of bullshitting our way through this. How important SMG across the street was for us. It was. That was awesome. So I mean, that was like an indoor facility. Yeah, so paint the picture again, and you can go into it here, Coach, a little bit. So, we, you know, Wood, we play at a different field. We just have a rock, grass combination, a dirt field behind Wood. We're working on changing that. But they were across the street that year, they built a uh, turf indoor facility for, like, indoor soccer and basketball and whatever. And that thought was massive for us. Yeah. We, we, uh, we spent a lot of time there. I mean – I remember some Thanksgivings out on Woods Field, and we just couldn't practice Thanksgiving Day. And you know, it was ice or snow on the field. This gave us the ability at any time we had bad weather, just go across the street, or if we just want to save you guys' legs, just go across the street. And it was it was awesome. And they were just getting started, and they loved the fact that we were coming over so they could promote it. And uh, I remember we had a college coaches coming coming in there and watching practice, and it was. Uh, it was definitely it was a, it was a game changer for us for sure. It really was, man. Walk across the street and everyone's got like carrying the bags and uh, I just remember like those little things is what you I still picture, you still picture guys crossing York Road with uh with equipment bags. Yeah, like there's someone's dragging a tackling dummy that's like a thousand pounds across the street. The freshman, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. funny. It makes me laugh. It still makes me you smile. Can't, you can't you can't talk about Wu without talking about the uh, Friendship Academy game. Oh. Okay, that was, so we'll go. That's one of the best, best experiences, best memories ever. All right, so I'll paint the picture, and you can dive into it a little bit. But uh, those listening, it is junior year. Again, we're trending in the right direction. We're playing at CB West, which is a field for me. And Joey, who played a bit, ended up playing a role in the game at the end of it, particularly that we grew up on. I ran on that field every day in the summer. I trained there, whatever. That's on my personal level. Of course, Mike Carey, legendary Central Bucks West coach, we're playing at West. We're playing Friendship Academy, a team from Washington, D.C., you can go into the details of how the game got set up and all these different things, but uh, they were a powerhouse team. 
they had a ton of freaking players. Eddie Goldman, I played with in the NFL. Still one of the best players I ever played with. And poor Arch, he scarred for life. He got ragged all for life. You're tough as shit, Arch. You're tough as shit. And uh, he killed them. And and they had some really good players. Their whole defensive back went to Maryland, whatever. Uh, we play him at CB West. And, yeah, I mean, kind of the rest is history. Yeah, we. Uh, I'll never forget – they come out for warm-ups, and I'm, I'm at the 50-yard line with Mike, and we're sitting there just looking as we come running by us. And I'll never forget, he hits me on the shoulder. says, the hell did you get us involved with? You know, I mean, so – but that was a legendary game because, you know, we were we were down. We had them winning the game. We're down uh, six points with under two minutes left. They have the ball. They're running the clock out. And they have like a third and ten. And a kid runs a sweep to the left or an outside zone to the left, and he runs out of bounds at like like eight yards. So he stops the clock. And it's the only chance because we had no timeouts left. The clock would have just ran out. So they end up punting, giving us the ball back. So we have like 20 seconds left, and we got to go like 80 yards or something like that. And uh, we don't have, a, you know, obviously a play, you know, high school, we don't play to do that besides chucking it deep. So, we, on the sideline, I get a piece of paper and I draw up a hook and lateral play, hook and ladder, and we do it and it doesn't work. And then we did it again, it didn't work. And we tried it the third time, um, or not before that. Kyle got hurt. Kyle gets hurt. So we do try a ball down the middle to Kyle, and he got the wind knocked out of him. And he's on the ground, so I go out there, and we have no timeouts left. So. I'm yelling at him on the field. I said, Kyle, just stay down. I said, and our trainer at the time, Pete, you remember Pete. Pete? So he's out there. And I said to him, I said, Pete, don't let Kyle get up until I tell you it's okay to get up. So I ran to the sideline and I got this. And we started drawing this paper up. Now Kyle's down. It's like a minute. And Kyle's tough as hell, by the way, for everyone listening. Like Kyle's not going to stay down. I mean, when knocked out of him, you're going down. I don't care who you are. But so he didn't, he didn't want to get he didn't want to stay down, but I told him he wasn't allowed. So they're sitting there, they're sitting there, I'm drawing this play up on the sideline. As this is going on, his mom is behind me on the fence, yelling at me the entire time, Steve, get him off the field. Get him. So we draw the play up. We end up throwing, I forget who caught the uh, hook, but they pitched it to, to Desmond, and Desmond runs down the sideline and gets tackled at like three yard line. Probably or, Sam McCain. Was it Sam McCain? Probably. So Sam gets it, pitches it, Des, Des runs down the sideline, goes out at like the three yard line. He cuts line. back too. He almost went out of, he almost like got tackled in bounds. We're like, oh my God. And then of course, Des makes like five people miss and makes it work. Yeah. But so we have, we have one play left and, uh, we no, got it. no, we did. We had, there's a penalty. Remember this. Des is at the 20. Kyle runs a, Post corner and gets held. Oh, right, 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 right. And then we had one play left. So we have one play left. So we run a sprint out to the left, throw back to you to the right. <laughs> and I'll never forget to this day, Joey Monahan, God bless him, sprints out to the left, stops, throws it back, and probably gets hit worse than I've ever seen a quarterback get hit in my life. And he just threw it up and it looked like it was up there forever. And it just comes down. You're sitting there. like It was just like it was slow motion. It was like – ball was spinning. Looking, Ball spinning, to, don't drop it, Kyle. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. And uh, we end up scoring and kicking the extra point and win the game. And, and uh, I, two things I remember after that was Mike introduced me to Mike Pett that night. And because and Mike was in, like, he was in awe that we drew a play up on the sideline and he wanted to make sure I showed Pett in that. And I remember that. And then I remember the Friendship Academy guys, as big and tough as they were, at the end of the game, one of the kids comes up to me and said, Coach, uh, did you guys make a mistake? I'm like, why? What's the matter? Well, there's only one sandwich in the box. So I, I, I thought there was two sandwiches. In it. I'm like, nah, that's, that's it. That's they, it. Yeah. Like Three-hour ride home and they care about the two sandwiches. Yep, 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 yep. Wow. No, that's a good little time capsule there, man. And, and yeah. oh, man, I what do I remember? I remember getting my ass kicked. They were tough, man. They were yeah. Whew, and, and were, we won the game because the kid who I, I forget who it was, the kid ran out of bounds. Third that, don't beat yourself, man. That's like so. Kyle stand down's great. I remember, you know, Mrs. Atkins screaming from the sideline. Yeah, I, I, I think I was watching. I think he went just like five wide, just fine, yeah. you know. And I think I remember. Yeah, I mean that was just nutty. Yeah, after the game, I just remember the next day, like 
all the people just texting like why did we leave it was all over the intel you know that was just really yeah. good so fast forward to senior year we're in the state playoffs we whoop the hell out of acc allentown central catholic who we have a ton of respect for um really good dudes and good players and i've been bumped into those guys all over john shore college yeah, so yeah. yeah th that was a really cool little two-year rival we had there and then um yeah we went on and played bishop mcdevitt which i think you can tell these so many good stories about this but we ended up winning 52 nothing and you know m breaking the state record for the largest margin of victory in pennsylvania state history and and an unbelievable storybook ending too and again, you guys continued after we left, but to a really a four year run there of like losing the state title, going to the state semifinals, going to the state semifinals, and then the first state title in Woods history with an unbelievable group of coaches, players, staff, you know, people at Wood were so all, all in on everything we were doing and really supportive. And I mean, talk about that game. What are some things you remember from before and after? You know, I, they were loaded and, you know, we've, getting there and, and uh, the kid Noah Spence playing on defensive end. And, and we were going into it with like, a, you know, we want to, we want to stay away from him. We don't want to run at him and this and that. And then we figured out, we just put you and Frank Taylor and we'll run right at him and neutralize him. And, yeah. you know, I remember Dez taking that long touchdown run where Brandon had, Brandon Peoples had two knockdown blocks and then Dez just shot it, shot out of the cannon and ran down the sideline and, and, uh, Remember Nate Smith having a touchdown, and and uh, I remember Guckin picking the ball off and running interception. Andrew well, Guckin. I remember being at the end, be like, "Oh!" and just start. We just started running, and yeah. I just remember, like, you know, again, things you remember. I'm like 20 yards on the field, and there's no one around, and everyone's going crazy, and Guck's like 20 yards out, and we're just mobbing him in the end zone. Yeah. The no yeah, it was a great, it was a great time, great night, and and yeah. uh, I still think to this day, and you know. People always ask me, compare your five state championship teams to, you know, which was the best one. And it'd be hard for me to say that team's not the best ever to play in Pennsylvania. And, and you know, I'm sure people, well, you lost a game, but, you know, it happens sometimes. And, we benched half our team after that, if you remember correctly. Yeah, we had seven different starters in defense yeah. when you look at the first game of the year to the last game of the year. So, yeah, Guck. I mean, that's another one, Guck. And <laughs> he's yeah. just hanging out. It's like, dude's like one of the best breaks, running back records and breaks like linebacker records by. Yeah we didn't even know who you was, you know, that's the type of depth we had. I think that's what made us great at Wood. Everyone talks about the, the studs. Um, Look at the kids like Yulis Jordan, who ended up playing corner for us. It was, it had just shut down one of the big receivers they had for them. And, and uh, we had a we lot had of those guys. We had great we had special teams too. Like McMullen, <laughs> McMullen, Vicari. Vicari. Yeah. Yeah. No, that we had the guys, we had the depth, we had the, the guys that cared. And you know what? The guys that didn't play, they weren't bad dudes. Nah. They didn't complain. You know, at least a couple guys, of course, do. But, like, everyone was all in. It was really unique and fun. And it, it was one of my, if not the best football experience I've ever had. Because, A, you had a great staff. B, we had a great team. You know, C, we came so far. You know, like, we went from literally, if you look at all the players from, like, freshman to end of senior year, I mean, it's way different. The culture was way different. It was like, holy cow. Everyone made fun of me when, in that post-game interview after West Catholic 2009 when I was a boy. And I'm like, what's the next powerhouse in the area? I can't believe I said that on radio, TV. And they put it on the announcements the next morning in right. school. And I remember everyone, powerhouse, screaming. My nickname was powerhouse. And I'm like, I don't why, why would we not be? And, um, I, you know. I think, you, like you said, you push the buttons and you push the right ones all the way through. Can you share the Urban Meyer story and your interaction after the game, the state title? I always enjoyed this one. Yeah, I mean, just remember him. You know, I knew he was there, and, and uh, he was there because of um, uh, their defensive end, Noah Spence. And, and uh, I remember him coming down after the game because Desmond ran all over him, and Brandon had Brandon had probably more yards that game, but Des was – you know, get recruited, and and I'm, I'll never forget him come up to me. He's like, "Who's that little guy running all over the place?" And uh, I'm like, oh, "That's Desmond Peoples." He goes, yeah. "What's he doing?" I'm like, uh, "He's committed. He's going to. Uh, I think I was he committed to Rutgers by that time." Yeah. Yeah, I said he's going to Rutgers, and uh, oh, okay, but it was just kind of a different scenario. You know, over Meyer coming down after the game, and and uh, you know, thinking enough of of our guys to 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 do that, and and I think he was there to. You know, between you and and Brandon and Frank and all the guys, and just making sure everybody was solid. And you know, if not, he was going to be there to try to get somebody to 
with somebody away to to fly. Did he say to you that we were the best high school team he's ever seen? He did. He goes, that was the best um, best performance I've ever seen a high school team play in a championship game. Yeah, that was cool, man. And that was like right in the unique times there in Pennsylvania. All the paternal stuff started to happen at Penn State, and Urban just got the job at Ohio State. Yeah, it was um, it was quite the ride. You know, that's these are some brief stories along the way. Is there any funny ones that you remember? I mean, I know I put you on the spot with the funny stories, but so many like coaches stuff, players stuff. Um, some of them you can't tell. Yeah, some I can't tell. Uh, I'll never forget that West Catholic game that we won. Your you know, the first time to beat West Catholic and just the, mm-hmm. all the coaches hanging out that night together. It's one of my favorite nights ever. And, and uh, I think it was one of the things that made what special was, you know, you guys are so co- close as players, but we were so close as coaches. And we, we hung out and, and, you know, we did everything together and families did things together. So it was kind of like it was a it was a big family atmosphere. It wasn't like going to work. It was like going to hang out with your your, your family in a backyard cookout or something every day. It's, yeah. it's kind of, you know, yeah, so nice bar and grill. And yeah. they had Chickies. I think Chickies plays a role in it too. And they go to Warrington. That's where everyone went after the game. You know, that's was very for Wood, right? We went to a private school. Like, you're not like a public school where everyone lives 10 minutes away. People live 30 minutes in each direction, you know? So we all hung out around Wood a lot. Yeah. I'd, I'd be, if I didn't say that our principal Mary Harkins had a huge deal on it as well, because I think she was so supportive of, of the football program and she was supportive of the school, but she was so into the football program. Like Monday morning, she'd come to my room and like, why'd you do this? And why'd you do that? It was like, he was talking to my dad again or the weekend or something. It's like, like, Oh Jesus, I already unpacked this. Yeah. So it was like, uh, um, but she was really supportive. And, and to this day, I mean, she's still, she's always texting me and calling me about, things that you or somebody or pits or, or she still texts me. Yes. To this day. And she's, she's truly um, in me, in my career and my journey of coaching and, and, and I wouldn't have been able to do anything without her. So she was, uh, she was that important to me and that important to that program at that time. And, and uh, I, I believe that fully. Yeah, no doubt. And I think too, you can add into some of the parents in there. You know, oh, we had absolutely. great, a great parent group, great, great, like just the the pregame meals, the, you know, the awesome you know, dinners, man. They were awesome elite. Dinners, you know, shout little, out to big, big Dave will listen to this. He used to bring like, a, you know, whatever that cost. You bring a chocolate milk for every kid. You know, they were like two bucks a pop. Go to right. Wawa and just erase the entire chocolate milk thing. Yeah. Now nah, it was, we had great parents and that chocolate was, milk thing. It, it, that went on for years. Oh, carry with the with the with the glass bottles. Charge you a buck. We had guys. Jim McCann used to go up and get it from the He's farm. A huge part of the program, Jim. Yeah. Shout out. Now, did he did video? He did a lot. Did video. Did the website. That's he did a lot of things. And he he was like another big thing to me was like he would say like I wasn't even into doing these websites, and he's like, you got to do a website. That's your resume. That's your history that's the history of these kids and that's and he got me to think that he got me to feel that and understand that and you know uh, he was 100 percent right about that and uh but him and you know patrick miller who's uh, obviously passed and he took pictures and videos for us and matter of fact you remember we had two highlight videos your senior we had the highlight video that did and we had a kid who i coached baseball when he was young kid phil gushu and he did like he was working for nfl films so he came and did one too. He, I just saw the other day. I just texted him two days ago. He's the, he was the director of photography or videography for the new Netflix series quarterback. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a great story. Yeah. Mike Pranzato shout out. He did the other one. Right. And then on top of it, on a fun fact, Des scoring, which I know you're, you may or may not remember, but Des scoring against Haverford, that reaching out for the goal line, Mike won the Canon Nikon or whatever photo of the year and he got four tickets to the Super Bowl and we went to the Super Bowl that year. Saw yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And you, you figure little things like that. Like, I remember your at-home dinner with Florida. Oh. So, not that, not about you, but I remember being in your house and I remember getting Mike Fitzpatrick to come over. Yeah. And you know, Mike wanted, Mike was our, one of our managers, student manager. And he was a good golfer and I think he might have played hoops or I forget what he did. Yeah. But he was just a great kid and great guy to have around. And I remember 
he wanted to go to Florida. He wanted to go with you and, and, and he wanted to be part of the football program. And I remember, and I don't know if you set this up or how this got set up. But I remember, you know, me and my wife, Sue, were up at your house. And um, I remember it was um, Dan Quinn was there, um, who was must champ. And then Derek Lewis, the tight end coach. Yeah. Yeah. I remember all those guys were there. And I remember you telling Fitzy to come over. And I remember, you know, introducing you guys to, to coach. And, and I remember him saying, hey, if you get into school, you apply to Florida, you get into school, we'll get you involved in the football program. And, I, you know, it's how little things like that. And then I think Mike Senior, I'm watching him on the sideline, signal plays in. And, yeah. and yeah. then he went – he, you know, he went to uh, he went to equipment manager path. He got hooked up with the Colts, was doing stuff with the Colts, and then he tells the story. He pretty much says, like the guy from the Colts, like, dude, you sure you want to do this? Like, it's a grind, you know. And Mike works his ass off. And he's like, you know what? It's not really my passion. I'm going to become a lawyer. Now he's a lawyer, yeah. And he's a really good one in that. And he's still, we're still great friends to this day. Yeah. Uh, but as a star, that's that's the stuff that makes the programs great. You know, you're talking Jim McCann and Miller and Pranzato and Fitzy and like the, the, it's it's the cast of characters that the, the moms the Archie Diaconos right. and the Mertz and those folks make it great because at the end of the day you don't have a lot of resources like you don't have a lot of people and that's I coach at LCMR football in Cape May New Jersey and I'm like guys we need volunteers and I always talk about your office being packed with like parents coaches and you're just like we need this we need that boom 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 and people go do it right I, you know, everybody says it like they're just as important as the coordinator and the center and the defensive back. I, I don't know. I believe it. Absolutely. I, I remember my first, first at Wood, Kathy Makewood, Joey's mom, yep. who was awesome and kind of like she was no nonsense and she just, <laughs> and then Terry Maxwell and, and Maureen Mert and Mary Arch and, and, oh, and Sheila Diodato and, and just down the line of, of these, these moms who just stepped up and, and did anything that, the program needed and, and it was awesome. And you're yeah, right. 100%, you know, the, behind the sum of that success. No doubt. I remember going to that wood, I would football.org and like uh, ESPN were the only two things I had saved on my desktop to see what right. we had and they would post the things, but yeah. I digress. We just did a nice little history lesson on wood. That's some good yeah. stuff there. Uh, as we wrap up though, talk about what you got going on in your sinus, how many years you've been there, what you've been up to, you know, what's next. Yeah, so I've been there sinus it's, it's six years now, and and uh, you know I've i when I was at Wood, we had a lot of guys that attended our sinus, and I've known uh, Pete Gallagher, the head coach up there, for a long time, and and uh, you know I've had different offers before to to go some different things, but you know I never really wanted to be that guy who just jumped around and move his family from place to place. So you know my son was done at Wood, Mike, and uh, you know. Pete came to me and, and said there was a spot open and we started talking and, and uh, I knew uh, know Pete for a long time. And he is one of the most, um, he first of all, he's awesome to work for. He is tremendously skilled at like motivating his team and, and he loves his players and, and there's n- wouldn't be a reason for me to say no to this guy. I said no to him, I think once. And, uh, but then it was like, you know, this is a perfect situation for me. And, and you know, you know, as a defensive coordinator and maybe the assist, the associate head coach. And, you know, so it, it's been a really good time. I love our signs. I love the kids there. We've been really good. Um, you know, we're, we're adding really good players each year and, and, you know, not only good players, but good student athletes, guys that are, you know, to play division three football, you gotta love football, but there's a, there's something after that. And, uh, you know, these guys are being leaders of the world today, being lawyers, doctors, you know, getting in med school, going to law school, you know, going into academies, whatever it may be, and, and going going for their masters. And it's it's been a great situation. Their science is a great place to go to school. It's a great place to get an education, but a great place to play football and a, really next a great place to spend the next four years of your life. So it's been a it's been an awesome experience for me and, and uh you know, I've had a lot of local kids come and play and guys that we've coached against that had a chance to coach, you know, and um, get a chance to coach with my son, which was an awesome experience. Kyle, as we said, is coaching with us now. And, um, you know, so it's been a great experience. Chris Lampard, who was, was on one of our staffs at Wood and who I coached in high school. Yeah, so it's been really good. But Pete, Pete is a, 
Pete's a great guy. He's a great guy to work for. He's one of my best friends, and he's uh, he's uh, he, he's done a lot for me. All right, so um, as we start to wind down here, I want to ask you, like, offensively, what are some trends that you're seeing that have just been a pain in the ass to stop in college football? Because the, 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 I'd say it this way. It's a bottom-up thing. High school coaches, you know, they, they have the time. They're sitting around. They may have some – they're taking a little bit more risk, maybe less to lose. You're seeing these gadgets and plays and uh, new things, maybe old things. And then it gets to college, and then the NFL may pick it up down the road. It goes you're, the other you're way. You're right. It kind of comes and goes. And, you know, when yeah. I first got – in the college, it was more everybody's running spread. Everybody's running four wide and, and uh, no huddle, fast-paced. You know, It's starting now to get more back into like 11 personnel sets. It's coming back to a tight end, a traditional tight end. It's coming back to a wide-off kind of situation. It's coming out with 11 personnel in 10 personnel sets. So you're finding that tight end guy who can also play in the slot or can also be the single receiver in a three-by-one set. And so you're seeing a lot of that stuff. Everybody's trying to run duo, the concepts of duo, um, you know, so RPOs is big, you know, being a defensive guy, you know, when the, when the offensive guards run the middle hook pattern, you know, I mean, that's, that's always a, something to complain about, but one of these, one of these times we're to call it, but yeah, they'll call it. Um, but, you know, that's why I think RPOs, you know, our offense, you know, we can RPO everything. So um, it's just how – it's neat to listen to our guys talk about what they're looking at defensively and how they can RPO stuff. And um, But, you know, I think the, the evolution is coming back to the tight end again. You know, I really do. And I, I think it was it was gone for a while. And uh, – but if you watch you watch the NFL now, you watch some of the major college teams, you're seeing a lot of one, two, sometimes three tight end sets out there. And, and uh, you know, I still think it doesn't matter what level of football – you got an offensive line that can block, and you can control the line of scrimmage. You're gonna you're gonna win a lot of games. No doubt, and that could, well, that's a perfect transition to the Eagles, who they spread it out a little bit. You know, I think Dallas Goddard, if he's with the Niners, he's doing damage like Kills doing. I think he's that good with with both sides of the receiving and and, and the blocking game. Talk about the Birds. You know, you've been a Birds fan your whole life. You, you grew up in Philly. You've seen the, the the culture of the Eagles. You've seen you know them win a Super Bowl, and you seen go to Super Bowl last year. But talk about this current team. Uh, you know, even from a coach's perspective, from, from fans' perspective too. Like, what do you like? What are some trends? Who are some players? You know, what do you think about the birds? Yeah, diehard Eagles fan. You know, love everything about them, and and uh, you know, I think you know being able to see them win a Super Bowl. You know, a few years back was an awesome experience. Again, a, a team that nobody really expected to win that year. Coming back to last year, where nobody, I think they were nine and six for two years, and then you know, or whatever they were. Last year, nobody expected to do what they did, and 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 you know Jalen Hurts really taking over and trying to the leadership that he had. And I wasn't a big fan in the beginning because I, I thought he had to prove himself still, and he proved me wrong. You know, throw the ball better than I thought. And, me too. Um, he was accurate. Um, he's got playmakers around him. He's got the best offensive line in football. Maybe the best offensive line, maybe top five ever. Yeah. Um, Probably last year. Best center in football. Best tackle in football. Maybe the left one, too. Christ, that yeah. guy's a mountain. If it wasn't for Trent Williams. <laughs> Defensively, you know, the big thing I think about them this year is that their three coordinators, I think, are different. So, you know, being able to, you know, make those game time adjustments and, you know, how much the head coach had to do with that or how much he didn't have to do with it. And, um, you know, I wasn't a huge fan of their defensive guy, but he, but he got him – Playing good, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, offensive guy I thought was really good, and I thought he did a good job, and and so, you know, that's they're going to have the players. They they drafted some good guys, they picked up some good guys, they kept some good guys. So I think it's now it's it's going down execution and adjustments and staying healthy. You know that. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, the nice know. thing is they have depth. I think that's one thing that's really hard to create in this league. It is hard. And depth wise, you know, they, dra- they find a way to draft an offensive lineman who's hurt, who sits a year, and then all of a sudden he's healthy. Like next, he, Landon Dickerson, and then the center from Iowa is going to be—he's a good player. You know, he's you know, a- I think this year, I mean, they had two St. Joe prep guys who are yes. really, really good players. I mean, Swift's a really good player, but you know, uh, the other kid um, is really good. He, I didn't realize he was the all-time leading yardage leader in University of Virginia history. Really. Total, I think it was total yards or all purpose yards. He's the all time leader. Yeah, the thing about Swift too is like that guy could be a Pro Bowl running back. Like 
punch behind that offensive line, you know, yeah. and, and and it's yeah, that's got probably no one even talking about in the league of especially with these running backs thing. It's really funky now with these backs not getting paid and all that stuff, but I get it. I understand it. You know, I don't I don't want it for the backs, but they need to, the union needs to do something to change it because it's too Saquon Barkley is the entire Giants guy's yeah. one of the best players in the NFL, one of the best players in the history of the league. The guy's just different. He's in the C Mac category, he's in whatever. Put him in an all time great running back category, he's in it. Um, but I understand it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, but I'm excited for him. You know, I think they start Tuesday or Wednesday this week. Yeah, man, it's it gets earlier every year. Yeah, so it's it's uh, you know it's exciting to get football back right now. I'm you know, I'm a huge baseball fan too. I love the Phillies, so it's uh, but to be able to to watch something else, we need to. Yeah, we do. We know. Now you watch the quarterback series. I have not watched it yet. I'm going to start it this week. Um, okay, so you're gonna. I mean. Well, I watched it. The first two episodes I got on my show, and I'm like, this is a bore fest. I already know what's going on. I don't need to see the highlights, but it's not even, it's really not that boring. But I wanted to see more. I wanted to see play calling. And then all of a sudden, it takes off. They're in the play calling. They're in this. They're in the, you know, you're going to love Kirk Cousins. Like the guy's incredible. Um, I think Marcus Mariota is the perfect backup for Philly. You'll see, you'll see him moving in the way he does things. Right. And you're going to be blown away by Mahomes. <laughs> you're yeah. going to be like, oh, my God, this, you know, I think he's the greatest ever. It yeah, you, you hear a lot. You see a lot with Mahomes interviewed and you see a lot of different things. But it, I've always been a Cousins. I, I think Cousins is a really good quarterback. And, yeah. You know, Mariota, I mean, that was that was Johnny Shelby's guy. Yeah. He'll be, I know he's jacked up. He's in Philly, baby. So, yeah. Now that's good stuff. Good stuff. Coach, what's the plan the rest of the summer? Just a little short time? Yeah, I get about – Another ten days we're back in the office. Count you know, them down, and then it's, it's go, go at it, and then uh, until uh, hopefully late in the season. So that's uh, but enjoy a couple more days down the shore here, and then uh, enjoy the weather. And, and but I'm getting itching to get back. It's 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 you know what? As much as you like the relaxation of it, you get bored, and you want to get back at it. And you know I don't have to run the routes. I don't have to do all the stuff you have to do. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, my anxiety's through the roof yeah <laughs> oh it's good stuff it's good stuff coach i appreciate you you know i love you and and uh can't thank you for everything you've done for me and it's great to have you on the show and catch up thanks kyle i appreciate it